when we're teaching mindfulness uh, to others as and explaining ways they can share these techniques with people, having activities and modelling is a very important part of uh, transmitting those ideas successfully. So one of the tools mindfulness teachers will use is a mind jar. So what is this? It's just simply a jar with water and glitter. Uh, you can get much more elaborate versions made up. But in this case, I'm just going to demonstrate what it is and why we use it. So the mind jar, or pretty much a snow globe, as a lot of people call them, is pretty much a way that you can help, particularly children, but adults get this too, is to recognise what it's like when you feel churned up with emotion. And also, it has a second purpose of when we actually do watch the mind, the, the mind jar at work, it becomes like an interrupter. So if you're in a situation with, say, a child that's having a panic attack or stressed out, you can say, come on, let's look at this. And simply watching the jar settle becomes a mindfulness practice. So let's stir it up and have a look. So I'll say to the children or the people, well, you know, what does it feel like when you're um, upset, when you're all emotional? And, and of course, I'll shake out and I'll go, is it like this? as opposed to previously being calm. Oh, yeah, we all recognise that. We're quite churned up. But look what happens if we watch the jar. What actually happens? That's right. It begins to settle. In its own time, it will settle. And our emotions and our thoughts are just like that. So that, that if we just simply allow the emotion to be present and recognise it's there, even name it to ourselves, we can just let it settle and move on. But the problem often is we attach to these feelings and tell a story and prolong so that the churned up feeling lasts longer than it would if we just let it be. Not easy, but you know, once you begin this practice of treating your, emotional, your emotions in this way, you quickly realise that you're actually participating in your own unhappiness by holding on to feelings and going over them and, and, and reliving them. So this is actually not a helpful mental practice and the sooner that we learn that we are actually have the ability to shift our attention when we, our minds are uh, going into overdrive with uh, excessive thinking, excessive hurts and explanations, um, it's much easier to learn to let it go. So that's the mind jar, very valuable tool. One more time, you could even begin by saying, oh, look, you know what it feels like when you're nice and calm and this is empty. And then, you know, what does it feel like when you're upset? Yeah, we're churned up. Very useful tool.